Disclaimer. Driving down this street requires a muscle car with tinted windows, a lift, and 32-inch rims. Better swap out that Toyota Camry. In this video, I show you Seven Mile Road in its entirety. You see a little bit of everything on this drive, including lakeside mansions, gang territory, hood hollering, middle class suburbs, and plenty of liquor lotto stores. Bonus points if you can count them all. We begin the video in the Gross Point area, one of the wealthiest areas in all of Metro Detroit. And no, these are not homes of drug and slumlords making profits off of junkies. These are homes of legit successful people. They worked hard for their assets. Don't hate. 9,146 people call Gross Point Farms home. Gross Point Farms has an average household income of $132,000 a year, and 72% of residents have a bachelor's degree or higher. Seven Mile starts out being named Maross Road in Gross Point Farms, however, it's not long before we enter Detroit. Once we do enter the first neighborhood in Detroit, the average household income drops from over $100,000 a year to under $30,000 a year. Oh yes, now we are officially in the Motor City limits. Most people that haven't been here think that 8 Mile is bad. Sure, it might be a little sketch on the parts where it serves as the northern line for the Detroit city limits, but 5, 6, and 7 Mile roads are so much worse than 8 Mile in terms of crime. 8 Mile is only famous because of Eminem's movie. 8 Mile historically has served as a line that divides stereotypes as well, as white people historically live in the suburbs just north of it, and black people live in the inner city just south of it. 7 Mile is 1 mile south of 8 miles so we are right now in the inner city if you couldn't tell. If you drive two blocks north of here, you will be in the suburb of Harper Woods. Harper Woods isn't that much better than Detroit in terms of crime, however there is a big gap in household income where Detroit is on the lower end. Moross goes at a diagonal angle as do all of the grid streets in the area that we are in. We are now in the Seven Mile Bloods gang territory. In late 2019, the founder of the Seven Mile Bloods, Corey Bailey, was sentenced to two life sentences along with other arrests throughout the gang. 
21 of them to be exact. The Seven Mile Bloods have participated in more than 14 shootings, at least 4 homicides, and 11 attempted murders, plus plenty of drug crimes. The Seven Mile Bloods territory captures the 48205 zip code, and most of the activity is done in the area bordered by Seven Mile to the south, Eight Mile to the north, Gratiot to the west, and Kelly to the east. The FBI and Detroit police have labeled this area as the red zone of Detroit crime, and in recent years it has been getting better slightly. This area used to be a lot worse than it is today in year 2020. In 2011, there were 42 homicides in the zip code, which was the worst out of all Detroit zip codes in that year. In 2018, there were half the amount of homicides, counted to be 21 in 2018. Robberies dropped from 310 to 171 per year, and aggravated assaults dropped from 679 to 626. I still wouldn't move here today, but it is a sign that things could be changing for the better. Flight removal and an increase in police presence has contributed to the reduction in crime. It's hard to imagine that Detroit used to have 1.8 million people when most of the city looks like this. The latest estimates show that Detroit has a population of 660,000 people. Keep in mind that this is also before the release of the 2020 U.S. Census. The violent crime rate in Detroit sits at 2,047 per every 100,000 residents. Only St. Louis has a worse violent crime rate out of all of the nation's large cities. The property crime rate sits at 4,723 per every 100,000 residents. The U.S. average violent crime rate is 382 per 100,000, and the average property crime rate is 2,362 per 100,000.
Residents in this area make on average only about $20,000 a year. 36% of Detroit residents live at or below the poverty line. 80% of adults 25 and older have a high school diploma, about 6% lower than the national average. Only 14% of adults 25 and older have a bachelor's degree or higher, which is about half of the U.S. average. To the right is Detroit's richest neighborhood called Palmer Woods. The average household income is over $100,000 per year, and most of the families that live there send their kids to private schools. The average home value is $380,000, and it would probably be more if Detroit offered better public schools. The Detroit public school system ranked as the worst in the nation in 2017 and 2018. Between here and Evergreen, the neighborhoods aren't the worst, but they could definitely be better. The average household income between here and Evergreen along 7 Mile is around $30,000 a year. Why do I keep mentioning the average household income? Because average household income is the most telling stat in what the overall condition of the neighborhood is like.
Between Evergreen and the Detroit city limits, the neighborhoods surrounding Seven Mile have an average household income of around $20,000 a year. Enter Redford Charter Township, home to 46,000 people with an average household income of $56,000 a year. 90% of adults 25 and older have a high school diploma, and 20% have a bachelor's degree or higher. Could be better, but Redford has a reputation of being pretty bad. I've always felt that that was a bit overstated.
And now we are in Livonia, one of the nicer cities in Wayne County, which is full of beaten up blue collar suburbs. Livonia has an average household income of $76,000 a year. 36% of adults 25 and older have a bachelor's degree. The population has been shrinking in recent decades, and today the city has 93,000 residents. What I like to say is that if you're looking to buy a decently priced home in a good area, you should look in Livonia. On the right is the site of the former Livonia Mall. All that remains is a Sears store that closed in the beginning months of 2020. The Sears store has been left untouched while the rest of the mall was torn down to make way for a Kohl's and Walmart. We are now in Northville Township where the average household income is $112,000 a year and 65% of adults 25 and older have a bachelor's degree or higher. On the left, not that far ahead, however, is the old Northville Psychiatric Hospital. Some of the buildings still remain while some have been torn down. Police have arrested people that have stepped foot onto the property to see the remains as it's not considered to be safe. Nonetheless, many YouTubers have footage of their explorations of the old Northville Psychiatric Hospital.
And now we are in Washtenaw County where the county seat is Ann Arbor. Seven mile this far out remains a paved road for the remainder of the drive where most of the mile roads that go out this far end up as a dirt road. And here we are where Seven Mile ends at Whitmore Lake. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. We'll see you next time. Peace!